1992, Shaquille O'Neal was chosen to be the next great center to lead his team to an NBA title. But despite his superlative play, his dream season ended with a rude awakening. Orlando would fail to make the playoffs. But why? History proves Bill Russell was a great center, but it was point guard Bob Cousy who was the floor director for six Celtic championships. In 1970, rookie Lou Alcindor did not win a title, but in his second season, he was united with Oscar Robertson. In their first season together, they each won their first title. In 1970, Walt Frazier and Willis Reed led the Knicks to their first of two NBA championships. And in the 80s, Magic Johnson and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar would form the greatest one-two punch in the history of the NBA. Draft Day, 1993, Orlando acquires guard Anthony Hardaway, and the Magic assemble the most devastating guard-center tandem in the league. April 8th, the Magic make franchise history with their first ever playoff berth. Now this duo is looking to rewrite the history books. And in their first ever playoff game, the young guns Hardaway and O'Neal were successful early on, building a 17-point lead. But the veteran savvy of Reggie Miller and Byron Scott shot down Orlando with some magic of their own. Today, the big man and his magic hope to get back on their feet. This is the NBA on NBC. The 1994 NBA Playoffs. Today, it's the Indiana Pacers versus the Orlando Magic. And here in Orlando, the 162nd straight sellout is on hand. We'll be back with the opening tip in a moment. The NBA on NBC is brought to you by Molson Ice from Canada, the land where ice was born. By Pennzoil, the motor oil you can rely on for performance, protection, and quality. And by Toyota, makers of the all-new two-door Camry Coupe, built in America and every bit of Camry. For the Orlando Magic after losing game one, it is certainly desperation time. It's the biggest game of the five-year history of the franchise. As you see the starting lineups, McKee, Dale Davis, Smith, Workman, and Miller for Indiana, Scott Kristoviak, Shaquille O'Neal, Hardaway, and Anderson for the Magic. The officials, Dick Pavetta, Jim Clark, and Steve Javi. In game one Thursday night, Indiana won 89-88. Shaquille O'Neal, 11 of 20, 24 points, 19 rebounds. He and Anthony Hardaway played well, but uh, the two veterans did it down the stretch. The combination of Reggie Miller and Byron Scott. Here's Workman, rebounded by Christovia. And this crowd is alive as they were here on Thursday night. Hardaway posting up. Christovia has played well the other night. And it's rebounded by Dale Davis, but a loose ball foul detected. Well, Shaquille O'Neal doing a little bit of what Dale Davis does so well, going hard to the offensive board. And Smith and Davis doing their best to try to keep Shaq off the court. Shaq really had an outstanding game the other night, Marv. One of his best defensive efforts that I've seen in two years. Rick Smith was called for that foul. They double up on Shaquille. And the Magic able to whip it around his Hardaway. And that will count as the goal tag. Anthony Hardaway getting credit for the field goal. Now well, the Magic worked on their crisp passes out of the double team. Shaq got it out nicely to Nick Anderson, who quickly got it to Hardaway for the penetration. Hardaway. Derek McKee gives it back to Haywood Workman. Rick Smith's with the rebound. Workman has played very well as the point guard during the second part of the season, taking over as the starter and had a good one here on Thursday. Seven steals, 11 assists for Workman. Here's Nick Anderson for three. Well, as we have seen, when Orlando is successful, they respond well to the double teaming of Shaquille O'Neal by hitting from the perimeter. And Nick Anderson was able to take advantage. And it all starts with the sharp pass by Shaquille O'Neal out of that double, not the lazy bounce pass. 
the champ of defense. Minute and a half gone by in the first quarter. Rejected by O'Neill. The kid O'Neill has five blocked shots the other night. Well, this is a matchup that bothered the Pacers in game one. Actually, Larry Kristoviak going against the seven foot four Smiths, which Jack able to roam the lane and help out. Reggie Miller buries the jump shot. And it is turned over by Hardaway. Good play by Workman. It was all over Anthony Hardaway. Workman did a terrific job the other night. Had seven steals. He won't get credit one for one there, but he did force the turnover. Haywood Workman in his third year out of Oral Roberts. Spent a couple of years in the Italian League. As McKee is able to hit off glass. And the Magic now leads by the score of five to four. Kristoviak, Kristoviak, and it's deflected out, last touched by Orlando. Oh, Orlando coming out with high emotion again, as they did on Thursday night. The one concern that Brian Hill has is they want, he wants the ball club to channel that emotion. He seemed to run out of gas in the early moments of the fourth period. And in that uh, fourth quarter, they shot only five for 20 from the field. Here's Miller. Off-balance shot by Reggie Miller, who's had an outstanding season. Averaged just under 20 points per game. Reggie also has a very unique rapport going with this crowd here <laughs> in uh, Orlando. He says he kind, kind of enjoys it. Anderson with another three. This time from deep of the corner for Nick Anderson has hit two from downtown. And Orlando leads 8-6. Here's Miller, he got the stick. Draw fouls, he did not get many on Thursday night. This guy moves without the ball as well as anybody in basketball, maybe ever, as he curled into the lane and here just gives up his body, trying to get to the free throw line, where he shoots 91%, as right now Penny Hardaway and <laughs> Ritzy are squared off way above the top of the key. Shaquille O'Neal called for the foul as first. You mentioned the excellent free throw shooting of Reggie Miller. He's finished, well, as I say that, he misses on his first. Finished second to Mahmoud abdul Rauf of Denver. Reggie at 91% from the line. He is one of the league's premier shooters. If there were four-point range, I think he'd lead the NBA in, in that category. Let's keep an eye on this matchup. Derek McKee, who's about six foot ten, guarding Nick Anderson at six four. So far, Nick has hit two three-pointers. The kid O'Neal works his way inside, and he, he's called for an offensive foul. That is his second. Jack trying to back in and knock a. Rick Smith out of there is exactly what he did. You, walking could have been called in this situation, but Smith's trying to body up as much as possible, and a good call by the referees as Shaq did throw the body into Smith. Now Dale Davis backing his way. Here is Rick Smith's air ball handled by Kristovia. Dennis Scott tried to go behind the back and lost it, stripped by Derek McKee. Here's Smith. Rick Smith having his finest season in the NBA. He's given the Pacers a 9-8 lead. For those of you who may have just tuned in, Marv Alba with Matt Gukas and Ahmad Rashad from Orlando, second part of our NBA playoff doubleheader. Utah earlier knocked off San Antonio, 96-84. to 84. Pretty low by Hardaway. And Orlando leads by one. So Utah and San Antonio are tied in that best of five series at one game apiece though meet in game three tuesday in salt lake city jay humphreys with 25 points to lead the way carl malone at 23. dennis scott try to hit shaquille o'neal and here's miller with anderson back reggie miller off to the fast start that's his third field goal he has seven and Indiana leads by one. Well, the Pacers were frisky with 17 steals. However, they did not cash in on a lot of them the other night. So far, they've done a good job of getting the baskets on the back. Hardaway hits the three. That's the third three-pointer for the Pacers, who were not hitting with accuracy from three-point land on 
Thursday night. Miller with the lead for Smith. Davis. And it counts. A goaltend. Goaltending is called on Shaquille O'Neal. Shaq uh, barks at referee Jimmy Clark. Has good ball movement by the Pacers. Dale Davis left alone because Shaq trying to help out on everybody, and Shaq touched it when it was over the top of the rim. Game is tied at, at 13. Orlando's backcourt has connected on five of five from the field, three from downtown. Scott passing on the three, looping it to Hardaway. Hardaway on the move. Good play by Dale Davis to alter that shot attempt by Penny Hardaway. Now Smiths takes advantage of the overplay. Rick Smiths with his second field goal. Indiana 15 and Orlando 13. Now Smiths doing a terrific job of running the floor both ways. He has to get back with Shaquille O'Neal going the other way because he's being guarded by Kristoviak and he's beating everybody down the floor going offensively. <laughs> Davis able to tip it over to Workman. Nice ball movement but Smiths not able to handle it. He thought he was fouled. Here's Hardaway with the breakaway. He's tied the game at 15. Dale Davis averaging just under 11 rebounds per game. Reggie Miller from deep. Rebounded by Dennis Scott. Good play by Workman to get a piece of it. with the lead for Davis. Beautifully timed. And Dale Davis with his second field goal has given Indiana a two-point lead. Another careless ball handling error by the Magic. They have not committed turnovers when the ball has gone into Shaquille O'Neal. They've been very sharp with that. And here's Shaquille getting inside. And the ball is deflected out. Last touch by the Magic. Well, Shaquille O'Neal has been held in check to this point with the Pacers up by two. Dale Davis, one of his two field goals, will be back in a moment. Fast start by the Indiana Pacers here in the first quarter. And Matt, most people not aware that Indiana, since late January, has the second best record of the NBA next to the Seattle Supersonics. They have had a terrific second half of the season. And remarkable because they had such a difficult start. The trade for Derek McKee coming over for Dentler Shrimp, a key player for this team for many years. Reggie Miller missed all the training camp. Byron Scott came in about a month into the season. So you just imagine what this team would have been like had they been all together and healthy in training camp. And then they went uh, through the decision-making of point guard. Poo Richardson originally the uh, starting point guard, but it's been a difficult season for Poo, hit by injuries. Larry Brown not happy with his play, and he's gone with uh, Haywood Workman, who was just on the left drive. Foul on Hardaway. His first second team foul. Haywood Workman, a very tough defender. And it looks like Kristoviak is trying to walk it off as he comes up hobbling off that collision. Oh, Larry in a lot of trouble there as he looked like he jammed his right knee. Larry started the first seven games of the year. Actually, it was Anthony Hardaway who crashed into Kristoviak. Larry started the first seven and then missed 48 games before he has come back. And of course, Jeff Turner hurt a couple of weeks ago, which has enabled Larry to get back into the starting lineup. Shaquille O'Neal on the bench right now. He picked up two personals in the first seven minutes of this ball game. Tree Rollins in there right now. Shaquille O'Neal taking only one shot in this first quarter, 0 for 1 from the field. A quiet start for Shaquille. Haywood Workman, an 80% free throw shooter. Indiana leading 19-15. And here's pressure. Rostoviak couldn't get it in. It's a five-second violation. He was looking for help off the Indiana double team and could not find anyone. Haywood Workman is just doing a terrific job of putting backcourt pressure on Anthony Hardaway, who has a size advantage. But right now, Hardaway not using his speed and quickness or even his strength to hold off Workman to catch the ball. Sam Mitchell and Antonio Davis have come on for Indiana for the first time. Five minutes to go in this first quarter. Here's Davis, who played well the other night. 
rebounded by Kristovia. So Hardaway moves across against Workman. Antonio Davis jumping out on a switch. Here's Scott for three. And rebounded by Antonio Davis. Miller played by Anderson. McKee changed his mind on the shot. Anderson. Mitchell fell down. Kostoviak off the board. He was stripped. Last touch by McKee. A Magic working very hard to try to get inside to get offensive rebounds. The Pacers just doing a better job generally of boxing out. The slap in there by Derek McKee, who has good hands, small hands, however, but very quick ones and a good passer. Miscommunication as that pass sails over the head of Scott. A shaky start here by the Orlando Magic. And he'll try to rev his glove. And now the crowd trying to encourage the effort of the Magic. Well, it's so difficult. You want your team to come out with a lot of fire and a lot of emotion, but sometimes you come out with too much, and I think that's the case so far in the opening minutes. Seven turnovers for the Magic here at the start. Four minutes to go. First quarter. Nice pick and roll. McKee fouled by Rollins. Beautifully executed by the Pacers. Free Rollins, the combination player coach who has seen quite a bit of action the last couple of weeks due to the injury suffered by Jeff Turner. And earlier this season, Greg Kite, who began the year as the backup center, went down on the injured list with a muscle tear of the right calf. So Derek McKee running for his fourth point of the night. Pacers now lead 21 15. Foul called on McKee. Derek McKee giving up that size to Nick Anderson, probably not quick enough to guard Nick that far out on the floor. It's interesting how the Pacers like to put their big guy, although Derek McKee is considered a small forward, on Nick Anderson. Backing his way. Hardaway. Rebound handled by Antonio Davis. Reggie Miller for three. Reggie Miller. Making it seven unanswered points by the Pacers, who now lead 24. 15 and Orlando wants to talk it over. 327 to go in the first. It is Indiana with a nine-point lead. Reggie Miller off to a very fast start. Four of six, ten points in all. And Reggie, a player who likes to talk it up with opposition players and the fans. He says he kind of enjoys playing the role of the villain on the road. I mean, I, I like being the underdog. I like the odds being against you. Anytime you go on the road, and especially in Orlando Magic's arena when it's uh, 16,000 against U12, and, uh, you know, they concentrate on calling you all kinds of names and calling your name out. That's the greatest feeling in the world. Thursday night, was it a, a rough crowd on you? Were they uh, yeah, going at you pretty great. well? Yeah, I like that. It gets me really uh, pumped up. I mean, I'm... I, I prefer playing on the road more than at home because I like the odds. I like beating, uh, you know, I like beating odds like that. It's the best feeling. When people are booing you and chanting Cheryl and Reggie, that's the best feeling. Yes, Reggie in his incognito pirate mode. <laughs> well, Reggie has a lot of flair in his game, being from the Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, Los Angeles area, a lot of people think he is a Hollywood type of guy. As Shaquille O'Neal in a crowd of blue shirts goes up and the obligatory hack and slap on Shaquille O'Neal to send him to the free throw line. So Shaquille O'Neal just checked back in. Indiana was able to run off a 24-10 advantage with uh, Shaquille sitting down in the first quarter. Reggie Miller was called for that foul. 
Shaquille O'Neal these days taking a bit more time between free throws, stepping back, trying to think about it, but missed on his first. And a Scott out on the floor, always reminding Shaq to back off and settle himself. He'll even do it from the bench as much as, much as possible. And it's a good reminder for Shaq to get into his routine. Anthony Bowie has come on for the first time. Lester Connor and Myron Scott, one of the heroes of the Indiana victory the other night, have stepped onto the floor for the first time. Oh, what a rebound by Antonio Davis. I mentioned earlier he played extremely well on Thursday night. He is an NBA rookie out of Texas, El Paso, as Hardaway is able to drive the length of the floor. Pacers now lead 26-18. Antonio Davis originally drafted on the second round back in 1990, played in Italy and Greece the last three years, and he has contributed off the bench right throughout the season. Lester Connor picked up on a switch. Connor with the feed. And a three-second violation called on Dale Davis. Shaquille O'Neal just rolling in and around the lane, looking to help his teammates in any way he can. However, it's opening things up for Dale Davis and Antonio Davis for catches like that or offensive rebounds. Scott rejected. Rejected by Antonio Davis. We come up on two minutes remaining first quarter. Scott off a crossover and lost it. Hardaway for three. Yes. Anthony Hardaway had lots of time to tee it up, then think about it, and then he hit. And he is taking matters into his own hands, penetrating to the basket at every opportunity, looking for his perimeter shot. He's going to try to make it happen for the Magic. Hardaway with 14 of Orlando's 21 points. Pacers by five. Minute 35 remaining in this opening quarter. Scott on a quick release. Hardaway gets to it. Anthony Bowie. And Scott did not expect the pass. The Pacers right now with a small forward in Reggie Miller on the floor with Byron Scott and Lester Connor and the two big Davises, a relatively small Pacer lineup. Rick Smith will check in at the next dead ball. And that was turnover number eight committed by the Magic. Anthony Bowie, an excellent defensive player all over Reggie Miller. Lester Connor normally does not look for the shots. Shot clock at three. Connor with the feed for Antonio Davis. Davis gets it back. And a foul is called. Antonio Davis, a player usually on loose balls, very active body. Bowie was called for that foul. Well, Davis, Antonio, that is, had to just hook it up there to try to beat the shot clock. Everybody knew it was going to come off hard. And Antonio Davis knew exactly where it was going to be in. And he was pushed into Kristoviak on the shove by Anthony Bowie. 53 seconds remaining. In the first quarter, Anthony Avent now checking in for Larry Kristoviak. There's Kristoviak setting up to try to take a charge, which he may have gotten that call had he not been pushed by Anthony Bowie. Spence looking for position on Anthony Avent. Here's Byron Scott. And the rebound handled by Derek McKee. Workman is open. Played by Bowie. And a foul is a good foul to cut off the fast break. Scott with a blocking foul, so that nullified the break attempt by Hardaway. Very smart play here by Byron Scott, and actually Anthony Hardaway a step or two in behind Anthony Bowie. And what Brian Hill wants and the crowd wants is that clear path to the basket foul where it'll be an automatic two shots despite the fact that the Pacers are not in the penalty. Here's Shaquille O'Neal. Has not scored from the field in this first quarter. Has only one free throw. Scott, well, Byron Scott with his first field goal. And Indiana now leads 28 to 21. seconds to go in the first quarter. Anthony Hardaway has Orlando's last 
five field goals. Hardaway. And that is the end of the first quarter. So the Indiana Pacers off to the good start coming off the victory here on Thursday. It might be some time remaining. 24 second violation. Might be some time remaining on the clock. Yes, two tenths of a second remaining. A horn you heard was the indication of a 24 second violation. So two tenths of a second placed back on the clock. And the only way that Indiana could score here would be on a deflected shot. And the reason why the clock would not reset here is because this shot by Anthony Hardaway does not touch the rim, just off the top of the backboard. McKee will throw in from the backcourt. Rollins checks in. Ryan Hill wants some height in front of uh, Rick Smith. And he doesn't want Shaquille O'Neal in there to possibly push off on Smith if there's a long pass towards the rim. That's the only way that they can score. That is it. Scott goes the ball. The horn went to end the first quarter. Shaquille O'Neal silent in this first quarter. One for two from the line. And that was it. The high point man for Orlando, Anthony Hardaway. 14 points for Hardaway. Miller leading Indiana with 10 after one here at the arena. It's the Pacers, 28, the Magic, 21. Back in Orlando, Marv Albert, Matt Gukas, now to the man voted sideline reporter of the year by Better Homes and Gardens magazine. Here's Ahmad Rashad. Ahmad? I can't believe you read that magazine, Marv. But anyway, we've been watching a Reggie Miller. You see him with the headband on and the glasses trying to play the bad guy role. That is quite the contrary. He's one of the nicest people that you ever meet. As a matter of fact, I came into the game early. He was down in the shoot-around, sitting in the corner, eating a bowl of ice cream. That's not the pregame meal of a villain. Marv? All right, Ahmad, Reggie Miller in the first quarter hit four of seven, one from downtown, ten points in all. And he'll get a rest here at the start of the second quarter. Byron Scott and Haywood Workman in the backcourt for the Pacers. Rick Smiths up front with Derek McKee and Dale Davis. Shaquille O'Neal remaining on the floor, only one for two from the line in the first quarter. Just one point the second quarter gets underway. It's Hardaway and Bowie now in the backcourt. Avent Scott and O'Neal up front. Anthony Bowie. And rebounded by McKee. Magic coming out with a pick and roll play, seeing if they can't get the ball to Shaquille that way. He's going to have to just climb on that offensive board to try to get some points there. McKee played by Bowie. And a foul on Avent, trying to tie up Smiths. Anthony Avent was presented the starting job at power forward for a while. Jeff Turner opened the season in that position. That's Avent, double zero out of, out of Seton Hall. But he did not play well, lost the job to Turner. And then when Turner went down, as Smiths is able to show the nice touch for his third field goal, and the Pacers lead by nine. When, when Turner went down, Kraskoviak was given the starting job, and now Avent has been coming off the bench. Kill O'Neal, nice fake and fouled by Rick Smith. Initially, Smith did a good defensive job holding his ground, did not go for the fake, had the arm straight up, but the good fake by Shaq forced Smith to react to the arm. As Shaquille is going to all of his bag of tricks now to try to get something off. That's a guy that's not too many taller than Shaquille in the league. Rick Smith is 7'4", and Shaq would have to arch that over the outstretched arm. Only the second point for Shaquille. And off the steal, a foul is called. Hardaway and Ava doubling up. And it's called on Hardaway. That is his second. Now Nick Anderson 
And Donald Royal check in, replacing Anthony Bowie. And Dennis Scott. Scott not able to get going. Short appearance for Bowie. Well, actually, Dennis due for a little bit of a breather here, but you can see Brian Hill is searching for some kind of combination primarily to start things at the defense and then to try to get some easy baskets. Here's Workman. Haywood Workman with his first field goal. And Indiana again has a 10-point lead. The Pacers try to make it two out of two in this best of five series with game number three to be played at Market Square Monday night in Indianapolis. Anderson dumps it off for Avan. He's fouled. Avan was looking for a goal 10. Derek McKee picks up the foul. That is his second. Nick Anderson did a good job of keep, keep moving. Uh, Derek McKee fell on the ground, and Nick took that opportunity to move without the ball, got the ball at about the free throw line, drew the defense to him to give Anthony Avan this scoring opportunity. Avan a 72% free throw shooter in his second NBA season. He was a sophomore on that Seton Hall team that went to the NCAA championship game against Michigan. Al McKee. Sitting down, Sam Mitchell returns. Both coaches here in the first half doing quite a bit of shuffling. The Pacers 32 and the Magic 24. Shot clock at six. Mitchell, line drive by Sam Mitchell. Sam Mitchell did a nice job earlier in the season when Dale Davis was sidelined by injury. Mitchell in the starting lineup. Here's Avent posting up. Anthony Avent with his first field goal. Well, getting some unexpected points from Anthony Avent, who was very confident that time. The trip before did an excellent job defensively on Smith, and just the good patience of the Pacers got that good jumper for Sam Mitchell. And here's Mitchell off the fake. Well, Sam Mitchell does Sam it inside. Mitchell. Indiana now leads by 10. Sam Mitchell in his fifth year out of Mercer. He came to Indiana from Minnesota in that Chuck Person, Michael Williams, Poole Richardson package deal. Three minutes have gone by in the second quarter. Orlando having difficulty locating shots. Three on the 24. Hardaway with a beautiful spin. 16 for Hardaway. He has been the Orlando offense in the first half. Rick Smith's not able to hit. Donald Royal on the rebound. Hardaway for three. Six thirty-one, Indiana. Anderson all over Scott. Smith gets inside on Avent. Mitchell on the recovery, rebounded by O'Neill. Hardaway for Anderson. Royal with the rebound and a foul is called. And Orlando beginning to show signs of life. Hardaway taking the smaller workman inside, giving the baseline fake, wheeling into the lane and using the glass nicely, and then pulling up on the fast break, semi-break, I should say, eyeing that three-pointer all the way and drilling it. Foul was called on Mitchell, timeout taken. Orlando now within five. The NBA on NBC is brought to you by McDonald's. What you want is what you get at McDonald's today by Sprite. Image is nothing. Thirst is everything. Obey your thirst. Sprite. And by Jeep and Eagle, official vehicles of the NBA. I'm on Rashad back at the arena here in Orlando. Now, a lot of people have been so surprised by Anthony Hardaway playing so well here in the playoffs, but I talked to assistant coach Bob Hill, and he was saying that 
Anthony Hardaway hit the wall this season right around in March. And when he came back from hitting that wall, his level of play had gone up about two notches above where he was beforehand, and he's continued here in this playoff series. Mark? And there is Bob Hill, the one-time head coach of the Indiana Pacers, now an assistant under Brian Hill. Bob Hill also one-time interim coach of the New York Knicks. Anthony Hardaway, 8 of 12 from the field. He's hit three from downtown. He has 19 points in all. And one of the things that Anthony has to be very careful here is not trying to do too much. His responsibility still is to deliver the basketball. He's got to get Shaq some shots. He's got to find plays for Nick Anderson. He's got to get kick out to Dennis Scott when he's out on the floor. There's a big load on his young shoulders. He's capable of doing it. Right now, he's trying to do all the scoring. Nick Anderson. job that pacer lead is now down to two they've let by as many as ten and workman lost it it's a traveling violation forced by anderson anthony anthony avent in the right place at the right time as rick smith mistimed his jump avent did not give up on the play and got rewarded with the deuce now met by Antonio Davis. Uh, now making a change. Here's Shaquille O'Neal. And he's rejected by Antonio Davis. Shaquille again. And that is his first field goal. So the game is tied at 36. And it's all started with some intensity at the defensive end. And the Magic now are quicker to lose balls than Indiana. Scott and Workman in the backcourt. Here's Mitchell. Mitchell Smith, Davis up front. Avent with a good box out. Anderson setting beyond the three-point line. 10-0 run by Orlando. O'Neal and rebounded by Davis. He tried to save it. He did, but Avent is on it. And a foul is called. A good sharp pass into Shaquille O'Neal. He caught Smith on his back. Wheeled in the lane, but there is Antonio Davis for his and block with the quickness to the loose ball and the opportunity effort for Shaquille O'Neal to get it back and up and in. Foul committed by Mitchell and Avent to the line. He's two for two from the line. He was acquired by the Magic from Milwaukee back in mid-January in a deal for Anthony Cook and a 1994 conditional first-round draft pick. That's Derek McKee. Back on the floor, Sam Mitchell, Rick Smith sit down. It's Dale and Antonio Davis. They are not related, it should be pointed out. Up front, along with Derek McKee, Haywood Workman, Ricky Miller in the backcourt. And Orlando takes the lead, even with seven points. It's the Magic by one. 11-0 spurt by Orlando. Miller. Kept alive by Davis. Crowd wanted a traveling violation. They will, that ball was deflected to the backcourt, so it is not a backcourt violation. Beautiful pass from Workman. Miller could not put it down. That basketball count. A timeout was called by the Magic. So Orlando taking possession. Timeout taken will be right back. Well, as always, Larry Brown has done a superb job as this Indiana Pacer team has turned it around in the second half of the season. Larry Brown, though, a guy has certainly made the rounds a coaching career that began in the ABA with the Carolina Cougars back in 1973 on to the, the Denver Nuggets from 75 through 79 to the college ranks, UCLA 1980-81, and then back to the pros. A brief stint with the New Jersey Nets in 82-83 to the University of Kansas. He won a national title led by Danny Manning. Back to the NBA, San Antonio from 89 through 92. Then the Los Angeles Clippers beckoned, spent a year and a half with the Clippers, and then it was on to Indiana where he took over 
for Bob Hill. And some people have said that Larry Brown coaches like he's double parked. He has not stayed yes. anywhere too long, but wherever he has been, he has turned them into winners in 21 years, just one year under 500, and that was the year in San Antonio before David Robinson came. Terrific coach. Yes, he has won wherever he has gone. He was brought to Indiana by a close friend, a one-time teammate at the University of North Carolina. That is Pacer President Donnie Walsh, both playing for Dean Smith at the end of their North Carolina career. 13-0 run by Orlando, the last three minutes off the steal. Anderson is fouled, fouled by Antonio Davis. Well, when this run all started about two timeouts ago, Brian Hill got all over Anthony Hardaway and Nick Anderson and got put it on them. We have to get up and pressure the ball. You two guys have to start it getting after the ball, using your hands, moving your feet, and putting pressure so we can come up with some transition baskets. Orlando by three. And uh, Matt, if uh, someone told you that Shaquille O'Neal would be only one for five, four points, halfway through the second quarter, yet the Magic would be up now by four points. Uh, you would be very surprised. It has been a rare off performance by Shaquille. Well, the one thing about the big fella, he will not stop working or playing. He'll get into this thing before long. 14 consecutive points by the Magic. Antonio Davis took a hip check from Shaquille O'Neal. And for Shaquille, that is his third foul. Step too late as he spotted out of the right corner of his eye. Antonio Davis coming down the lane. Jack has had the freedom to roam the lane in this series so far, not guarding Smith when he's on the floor, playing one to Davis. Davis is who are not offensive threats, so he can help out. He was just a step slow. He's going to have to go to the bench soon. 6.09 remaining in this second quarter. I don't think Brian Hill knows that Jack has three. He does now. That's Vern Fleming. Checking in for the first time, and now Tree Rollins will make his way. So Shaquille O'Neal with three fouls, only one of five from the field, two of four from the line, four points. Not a very good-looking stat line for Shaquille. Antonio Davis converts one of two from the line, and it's Orlando 40 and Indiana 37. It is a game of desperation for the Magic. They do not want to go back to Indianapolis trailing in this best of five series, two games to nothing. Event with the step, and that is rejected emphatically by Dale Davis. Here's Miller on the breakaway and stopped by Anderson. Good play by, by Nick Anderson. He, he handcuffed Miller and then he braced the fall. I don't know which is worse, getting the foul as Anthony Avent drives. And Dale Davis had this thing measured from about the second bounce as Derek McKee sends Reggie Miller on what looked like a breakaway. Good hustle by Nick Anderson to tie him up. Nick picks up the foul. You're putting the second best free throw shooter on the league at 91% on the line. Uh, choose your poison. <laughs> Reggie did miss his first free throw attempt. He is now two of three from the line. He has 11 points. Here's Rick Smith's back, replacing Antonio Davis. But that's the kind of playoff mentality that you have. You're just not going to give easy baskets. That was not a flagrant foul by any means. He just wanted to wrap up Reggie Miller and make him earn it from the line. And that was Shaquille O'Neal on the bench. Indiana has outscored the Magic 9-0. Five and a half remaining in this first half. Donald Royal gets inside. It's Orlando 42 and Indiana 39. Donald Royal on Thursday night in game one, constantly looking to go to the basket. That's his game with that quick step, and he's effective at the foul line. Shot clock down to five. Smith's working on Rollins. It's tipped home. Dale Davis. Dale Davis gets credit. The crowd was looking for offensive interference. I got the feeling from talking to Rick Smith yesterday, he'd rather have a big guy. He was disappointed that Shaquille did not guard him in game one. He almost feels more comfortable with a bigger player guarding him. 
Anderson off the fake. Rebounded by Avan. Anthony Avan has been the surprise of the first half. Off the bench for 11 points. They are not boxing him out. The Magic by three. Indiana wants to talk it over with 4.45 to go. First half. Sunday at noon Eastern, a playoff triple header. First, it's round two of the battle for New York. Patrick Ewing and the Knicks came up big, notching the first win. Can the Nets even the score? Then Scotty Pippen, fresh off a 31-point game, looks to power the Bulls to a 2-0 lead on the Cavs. And Charles Barkley, the dominant force in game one, leads the Suns against the Warriors. Sunday on NBC. Welcome back to Orlando. Marv Albert, Matt Gukas, and Ahmad were shot with 4.35 to go in the first half. And despite the fact that Shaquille O'Neal has been silent in this first half, it is Orlando with a 44-41 lead. Check that out. The Pacers have outscored the Magic by the count of 11-4 with Shaquille on the bench. That's where he is right now after collecting his third foul. But the Magic enjoy a three-point lead right now, mainly because Anthony Aben is doing an outstanding job putting a lot of pressure on the offensive boards, and it has got him involved in this game. And finally, the fans here in Orlando seeing him play with a lot of enthusiasm. Dale Davis. Dale Davis. Well, Davis doing it off the drive. He's four of four from the field. He has eight points, and the Magic now leads by one. Now, Aben handling the ball. Draws the double team. And his pass deflected, but a foul is called. Avan very fortunate that contact was made. The foul number 10. Vern Fleming picks up the first. A touch foul, but a good call by the official as Fleming just did tick the wrist of Avan as he put it up for grabs. Would have been another breakaway layup for the Indiana Pacers. Indiana over the limit. Avan spending time at the line. He's five of six. 11 points in all to give you an idea how extraordinary Avent's scoring prowess has been here in the first half. 41 games with the Magic this season. He was in double figures only twice. And here he has 12 points in the first half. And the Magic are going to be have to be very careful with this lineup right now. Of course, Hardaway, the best ball handler. Fleming's trying to keep the ball out of his hands. Nick can get it into the front court. But Royal, Avent, and Rollins do not handle the basketball well. You can expect the Pacers to put as much pressure on as possible. And Avent with his 13 point has equaled his season high as a member of Orlando. The Magic by three points. Running for Spitz. Out of four minutes to go in the half. Here's Fleming out of finger roll. Will not count. It's an offensive foul. Fleming leans into Donald Royal, and Royal did set up and stepped up just underneath that dotted line where you have to be to take a charge on the direct drive to the hoop. Pressure by the Indiana Pacers. Larry Brown has dramatically improved their defensive approach. One of the reasons they were able to turn things around in the second half. This one is called on Donald Royal. Well, Donald, a very physical player. He was being poked at, grabbed. Everything that Richie Miller could do, but poke him in the eye, anything to try to keep him from getting position. That call could have gone either way. Indiana with the ball. They are now down by three. They led by as many as ten. Smith's putting a spin move on that his pass was deflected away. Last touch by the match. Eleven on the shot clock for the Indiana Pacers, who went 47 and 35 during the regular season. Best record in the NBA history of the uh, Pacer franchise. Smiths. Smiths on the follow. Rejected by Rollins. 39 year old Trey Rollins with the block shot. Hardaway on the hesitation dribble. And Smiths comes away with it. Now Fleming pushes it down. Burn Fleming with the scoop pass that was nearly picked off. Back to the magic. Oh, all 
seven foot four Rick Smith had to reach down to his shoe tops to pick this ball up and then try to get it up to the rim. And that's why uh, Tree Rollins was able to block that shot. Number four all time led the NBA in 1983 with the most blocked shots. Did not expect to be on the active roster this season. Began the year as an assistant coach. Royal foul hit by McKee. But uh, Tree Rollins certainly getting the playing time since the injury suffered by Jeff Turner. McKee picks up his third. Reggie Miller fronting Donald Royal on the post-up situation. The Magic just do not think that Miller is strong enough to play Royal inside. And on the nice over-the-top pass by Hardaway, Derek McKee came over to help out and picked up that foul. And now Ken Williams, who did not play the other night, has checked in for the first time, replacing Derek McKee. Kenny Williams, fourth year in the NBA out of Elizabeth City State. He is a leaper, noted for his slam dunks, and he is in the rotation because of the injury suffered in game one by LaSalle Thompson, who broke a phone in his left hand. Off the steal, here's Anderson, and he is fouled by Miller. That's number two committed by Reggie Miller. The pressure defense of the Orlando Magic starting to turn the game and the momentum and the crowd certainly in their favor, and it has created a lot more easy basket opportunities. It was the big thing that Larry Brown was concerned about going into this series. He wanted the Magic to have to come down and play half-court basketball, despite the fact that they had the overwhelming edge with Shaquille O'Neal inside. Did not want them to let, to let them get into a running game. Orlando, 13 of 19 from the line. They are the second worst free throw shooting team in the league at 67 percent. Obviously, the problems of Shaquille O'Neal, a 55 percent free throw shooter, contributing to that number. Six point magic lead, biggest lead of the game for Orlando. Miller for three, yes. Reggie Miller hitting on his second from downtown. He has 15 points, and Orlando is up by three as we come up on two minutes remaining first half. Hardaway. Even the rebound and out handled by Smiths. Here comes Fleming. Fleming slicing his way down. Oh, what a move by Fern Fleming, and then knocks the ball away from Donald Royal. That will be a delay of game called on Indiana. Uh, Reggie Miller very patient on the baseline, telling Kenny Williams to go up high, and Anthony Hardaway doing a good job until there when he lost them. The constant movement by Miller and the good screen, and despite the good show by Tree Rollins, he had enough daylight. Orlando by one. And they missed their last five shots. Hardaway with the spin. Hardaway with the bucket. Beautiful move by the rookie Anthony Hardaway. He's the high point man with 21. Orlando by three. Minute and a half left. First half. The Magic try to tie the series at one. Indiana hoping to go back home with a 2-0 lead. Bad pass by Kenny Williams, but fortunate that it was knocked out of bounds by three runners. Nine on the shot clock for Indiana. Byron Scott, Sam Mitchell checking back in. And a timeout is called. A 20-second timeout called by Indiana. Larry Brown calling over the official, Dick Pavetta. Larry Brown very upset. And he's upset with Tree Rollins as he's been barking at Tree. And Tree not one to back off from wait, anybody. Wait, he's been barking at Tree. <laughs> How clever. <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal only one for five in this first half. Only four points in contrast to what he has accomplished during the course of the the regular season against Indiana. They split their four games, and Shaquille averaged 37 and a half per game. Back in December, he had a 49-point explosion that at Market Square, but uh, Indiana won that ball game, had a 36-point game in the last meeting back in uh, early April. Indiana won that game. Indiana winning both games in Indianapolis. Orlando winning both games uh, here, and Shaquille with only four points, two rebounds, and three fouls. And a 
few reasons for it. When the ball went inside the shack early in the ball game, of course the hard double team came, and as they worked in practice yesterday, get it out crisply. Not that bounce pass, but sharp passes. So Shaq was tuned into giving the ball up very quickly, and he also picked up two quick fouls, which made him a little bit less aggressive, and then got his third foul with about six minutes to go in this first half, and he's spending time on the bench now. Well, we'll resume with nine on the 24. Minute 20 to go in this first half. And Orlando leading by three. Mitchell inbounds. Broken up by Anderson. Crowd responds to the hustle of Nick Anderson. Now Kenny Williams will throw in. Picked off by Royal. Guarded now by the veteran Fern Fleming. Royal set the pick and Williams fighting by it. Call for the foul. Foul number 24, Ken Williams. Kenny Williams His first picks it up. The Indiana Pacers had hoped that Kenny Williams someday might be a Sean Kemp type player. It has not turned out that way. Kenny Williams did not receive the playing time. He did earlier in the season when Dale Davis was injured. And Kenny Williams playing here in the first half uh, because LaSalle Thompson is sideline. Kenny can run the floor very well and get up in the air. He really plays above the rim. They like to throw lob passes to him. He's got a good 15 to 17 foot jump shot. It's just sometimes he gets out of control. Orlando 53. Indiana 48. Just under one minute to go. First half. Mitchell played by Kristoviak. Fleming got the step. Fleming with another nice play. It has been an injury hit season for Vern Fleming. And Vern Fleming has come off the bench and has done the job late in this second quarter. Here's pressure again by the Pacers. The magic lead is three. Indiana at one stretch, led by as many as ten. Royal sets the pick. It's a pick and roll. Nice switch by Mitchell. Royal with the step. And the outside official, Jim Clark, indicating a foul against the Magic. It's on Larry Christovia. Brian Hill with a small team out on the floor right now. Tree uh, Rollins on the bench. So Christoviak, Avent, and Royal. Avent and Christoviak both about six foot nine. Royal at six foot seven. That's the front line. Six foot seven Hardaway and six foot four Nick Anderson. So it's a small team. But also the Pacers are a small team right now. Both teams over the foul limit. Byron Scott, man who spent 10 years with the Los Angeles Lakers. Signed with the Pacers as a free agent last December. Byron Scott with 143 career playoff games. The rest of the Pacers combined for 147. The Orlando Magic combining for 104. And Byron Scott, as Ahmad mentioned earlier, has three championship rings as a member of the Lakers. And most of that 104 coming at the expense of Tree Rollins for his 16 yes. previous years in the NBA. Orlando's lead is now two as this first half winds down. 20 seconds to go. 10 on the shot clock. And the steal by Scott. Couldn't hold on, though. And the ball goes back to the Magic with 16 seconds left in the half. This is that normally when the Magic want to get the ball into the hands of Kenny Hardaway, spread it out, and let him go one-on-one. -on -one. Hardaway working against Workman. Down to five seconds. Royal goes for the jump shot. With two seconds remaining, Orlando leads 55 to 51. Mitchell inbounding. Workman. So led by Anthony Hardaway. Who scored 21 in the first half. 
despite the fact that Shaquille O'Neal had only a field goal and two foul shots before, it's Orlando with a four-point lead on Indiana. A terrific first half for Anthony Hardaway. The Magic by four. Stay tuned for the Prudential Halftime Report with Bob Costin after these words. This is the Prudential Halftime Report, brought to you by the Prudential. Peace of mind. It comes with every piece of the rock. And it's halftime in Orlando with the Magic leading the Pacers 55 to 51. Bob Costas in New York. There are eight first-round series going on in these NBA playoffs. We'll try to catch you up on most of them right now, starting in San Antonio, where the Jazz beat the Spurs 96 to 84 to even that series, but it was a game Utah actually led by 30. Here are some highlights. You may recall in game one when the Jazz lost badly, Carl Malone had 36 points but didn't get any help. No other teammate in double figures. Well, today Malone did not play especially well, but Jay Humphreys came off the bench with a playoff career high of 25, and the Jazz led it by 17 at halftime. The story in this game, though, cold shooting by the Spurs. They got only nine points in the second quarter. They missed 25 consecutive field goal attempts over a 16-minute stretch in the second and third quarters. David Robinson was 2 of 14 for the game. John Lucas looking on in disbelief. The Spurs also received a big scare as the Admiral every night to play, especially here in our building. We don't we don't let anybody beat us here. I mean, we make a statement where this is our place, we shouldn't be beat, and when people come in here, they fear us. I think what's gotten to my younger team is their talent, and uh, that makes it uh, hard. Uh, we, we certainly can be more competitive, but this is a great basketball team. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're going to not only have to play well, but we're going to have to get some breaks uh, to, to be able to win in this series. The Sonics are finally starting to get the respect that they have craved for such a long time. But remember, this is just the first round of what they hope will be a very long playoff season. We'll have to wait and see if their talent and their attitude can carry them through to the title. As we told you, during the regular season, Denver did surprisingly well against Seattle. They split four games with the Sonics head-to-head, -head, and Dikembe Mutombo, the young center of the Nuggets, really gave George Carl's team problems. In the first game of this playoff series, which Seattle won easily, Mutombo had 12 points, 9 rebounds, and 4 block shots. We'll send it back to Orlando for the second half. Marv Albert and Matt Gukas will rejoin you with the Magic leading the Pacers by 4. That's after these messages from your local station. This has been the Prudential Halftime Report, brought to you by the Prudential. Peace of mind, it comes with every piece of the rock. The Indiana Pacers making their way onto the court for the second half. Indiana now trailing by four. Marv Albert along with... Matt Gukas and Ahmad Rashad back in Orlando. And uh, Matt, what is extraordinary about this first half, you look at the, the stat sheet, the starting front line for Orlando, the combination of Shaquille O'Neal, Larry Kristoviak, and Dennis Scott, combining one for nine from the field in the first half, yet the Magic leading by four points. Well, Shaquille O'Neal had to spend a lot of minutes on the bench because of foul problems, but Anthony Hardaway has picked up the ball and carried it very well. And then some unsuspecting help from Anthony Avent. He did a magnificent job off the bench for the Magic in the first half. All right, for the Indiana point of view, let's go to Ahmad with head coach Larry Brown. All right, thanks a lot, Marv. Coach, down by four points at the half. One of the people that you were concerned with, and rightly so, was Shaquille O'Neal with three fouls, kept him on the bench. But Anthony Avent and came in and, and made some noise. Yeah, they had some guys that uh, you didn't expect step up. And I think their second team defended really well. We were going a little bit too fast, put them on the line. Uh, but uh, we were behind last time at halftime. Hopefully, uh, you know, we can relax and come back the second half. Turnovers I know you were concerned with. Well, we always turn the ball over. <laughs> and now that we're playing on TV, we're leave even a little bit more nervous. All right, good luck to you in the second half, Coach. Thank you. All right, back to you, Marv. All right, Ahmad, right here. Let's take a look at the Miller Genuine Draft halftime stats. In the first half, the Pacers 20 of 43 from the field for 47 percent. The Magic at 45 percent. And as you can see, Shaquille only one for five in his 16 minutes had only two rebounds in the first half. Three-point shooting a factor 
for Orlando. Not able to hit the three in game one on Thursday, but they have connected on five out of six. Sparked by Hardaway, who hit three of three from downtown. So that's the story and the first half here in Orlando. It's the Magic by four. We'll be right back. Crowd of 15,291, the 162nd consecutive sellout here at the Orlando Arena. Indiana Pacers and the Orlando Magic getting ready for the second half. Indiana hoping to go back home up two games to nothing in this best of five series while the Magic trying to tie it at one apiece. Reggie Miller, the high man with 15 points, 5 of 10 from the field, and he's hit 2 of 3 from downtown. Dale Davis with 8, Rick Smith with 6. Anthony Hardaway has been the focal point of the Magic offense. He played the entire first half, 9 of 15 from the field for 21. Anthony Avent, the surprise, he has already equaled his season high as a member of the Orlando Magic with 13 and 10 points for Nick Anderson. Shaquille O'Neal is playing with three personal fouls. Has not been able to get into it. Uh, Dennis Scott is also going to have to get involved. The Magic play their best basketball when Dennis is firing from beyond the arc and drawing that defender out and then taking the ball to the basket. Let's see how the turnover situation turned in the second quarter. Anderson opens up the third. Giving the Magic a 57-51 lead. Orlando was sloppy in the first quarter, and Indiana gave it right back in the second. Davis missed on the funnel. And it's knocked out of bounds by Smith. Well, Dale Davis is not going to get a better look at the basket all night long. I thought he may have heard footsteps there from Shaquille O'Neal, but he was wide open and just clanked that thing hard off the glass. Well, Hardaway stepped out. Workman and Miller in the backcourt. Up front, Dale Davis with McKee and Spence. And McKee took the hit. Anderson picks up his second. Derek McKee just two for ten in game one. One for one in the first half. And the Magic small forwards have just dwarfed. Pacer small forward statistically. And Hayward Workman knocks down a three. So Workman has seven points. And it's Orlando by three with a minute gone by in the third quarter. Shaquille O'Neal draws the foul. Indiana looking for the tie-up. Foul committed by Davis. Shaq worked a little bit harder that time to get the ball with two feet in the paint. He did and was closer to the basket and just threw that little half a step enabling him to get into that seam before Dale Davis could come down and double team. He is now three of five from the line. Only a 55% free throw shooter. Go ahead, Reggie. Go, Reggie. Kill is really struggling. Workman gets inside. Shaquille did not want to pick up number four. And it looked like he was a step slow getting there, but you're right, Marv. A smart play there by Shaq to just let him go and make that rather than pick up the early fourth so soon in the third quarter. Would you say we have seen the most ineffective first half of the season? Kill on the no question about it, but this guy is a battler. He doesn't know the word quit. He's rejected and fouled again. So O'Neal back to the line. Dale Davis called for the foul, his third. You can see the frustration on the face of Shaquille right now. He's a scorer. He likes to score, and he likes to be able to do a lot of things. This is a good test for him in that he has to figure out other ways to get involved offensively. As Dale Davis has to go to the bench. Maybe cut in the face area. But instead of just relying on posting up, Shaq has to come out, set screens for Dennis Scott, open up some driving lanes for his teammates so the Pacer defense can be drawn away from him, and then he might be able to get some little dish-off, shovel-type passes. Now Shaquille comes up short. He was long on his 
previous attempt. He's two for seven from the line. Here's Dale Davis with the uh, Indiana trainer, David Craig, checking it over. Five points for Shaquille O'Neal. His season low, 16 against the Seattle Supersonics. The Magic leading by two. Two minutes gone by in the third. McKee's drive was stopped, and then his pass picked off by Hardaway. Anderson met by Miller. Dennis Scott not able to hit the three. He's 0 for 3. But maybe his best look in the afternoon. Dennis Scott got off to a quick start back in, in game one. Not able to get going here. O'Neal with the block. Smith's on the recovery. McKee shooting. Comes back to McKee. And he's fouled. The foul on 32, Shaquille And it's on Shaquille O'Neal. That is number four. Derek McKee has come out much more aggressive in this third period. He knows he's got to give his team some scoring. He's trying to penetrate. He is a good passer. Sometimes passes too much as he's a turnover prone type player. That time, he saw Shaquille right out of the corner of his eye and took it hard to the, the basket, looking for, for a hoop or the foul. Good hard move by Derek McKee as an obvious foul by Shaquille O'Neal. McKee has five points. And the Magic lead is one. Shaquille O'Neal now with four fouls, and we're very early third quarter. Here's the double team. Shaquille pops it out. Hardaway. And a foul committed. Nick Pavetta with the call. It's against Indiana. It's on Antonio Davis. Let's go over to Ahmad Rashad. All right, Marv. Dale Davis just dislocated uh, the pinky finger on his left hand. They have uh, put it back into and put it back, and I think he's uh, available to play. And they continue to work on that uh, finger of Dale Davis. Anthony Hardaway making his first appearance at the line and Orlando continues to help hurt itself at the free throw line 17 for 27 at the line but to be shooting that many free throws so far in this ballgame shows that they have been the more aggressive team not that the Pacers are not playing hard and getting after it it's just Orlando's doing a little bit better job in that area Scott stepped on the baseline Indiana maintains possession Indiana Pacers went 47 and 35 during the regular season their best ever NBA record finished tied for third in the central tied with Cleveland 10 games behind Atlanta for Indiana this is their fifth straight playoff appearance but they are still looking for their first series of victory Reggie Miller. and he's tied the game at 59 Indiana Pacers have been knocked down in the first round each time, only once did they make it as far as a fifth game. This during the course of their NBA days. In their ABA days, the Pacers won three titles. Hardaway hit from behind by Workman. That is on the first foul on Hayward Workman. That's pretty good when you consider he is a very aggressive defensive player. It was interesting what Larry Brown said yesterday. He said he's really not a point guard. He has a lot of limitations. We love him for the effort that he gives us. And he doesn't have quick feet. And that time Hardaway got by him. He tried to reach around with the line. Shaquille O'Neal hacked by Rick Smith. Ball number 45, Rick Smith. Number three he's committed by Smith. Shaq going to the little turnaround fadeaway here as Smith's a foolish foul in there. If you're an Indiana Pacer, you want to save those foul for when Shaq is ready to lay it in or dunk it. You, if he's going to make field goals, he's just assume to and beat turnaround jumpers or jump hooks. Shaquille is now four for nine from the line. Well, he hits two out of two for the first time. This afternoon, Magic 61, Pacers 59. McKee had it knocked away. McKee on the recovery. 
Workman. Haywood Workman with nine, uh, 11 points. Another solid game for Workman. And the game is tied at 61. Anderson try to work off the pick. Pick and roll for Kristoviak. Hands to O'Neal. Way off the mark. Looked like he expected contact. Smiths fouled by Scott. What an unusual shot by Shaquille O'Neal. Got the nice dish from Larry Kristoviak. He's normally going to tomahawk that thing right through the rim. And he tried to shoot it from about six inches away and shot an air ball, which is just hard to imagine. Shaq going up there, not really a lot of contact with Derek McKee as he missed the basket from six inches away as Brian Hill, from his vantage point, way down at the other end of the floor, thought that must be a foul. Rick Smith in his sixth season out of Marist by way of Eindhoven Holland. And over the second half of the season with Indiana playing so well, Smith turned his play up a notch. He averaged better than 15 a game. That is a career best. The Pacers now lead 63-61. Hardaway hand-checked by Workman. Here's the double team. Shaquille got it out for Scott. And a Scott way off. And kicked out of bounds by O'Neal. If Shaq would just be a little bit more patient, he's got Larry Kristoviak coming to the basket as his man, Antonio Davis, leaves to come double team. There's a layup there for Kristoviak every time. Chant of defense from the crowd. Last touch by Antonio Davis. As Shaquille reaches in and knocks it off his leg. Shaq, since he picked up his fourth foul, has been involved in three very questionable plays where his fifth foul could have been called. He's still aggressive. Brian Hill's heart must be in his throat. As Shaquille remaining on the floor with the four. Timeout. Orlando calling for the timeout, but a foul is called on the Pacers. O'Neal took a shot from Smith. That's number four on Smith. 6.54 to go in the third. The NBA on NBC is brought to you by Dick Tracer. It traces every curve on your face. By Castrol GTX, engineered for today's smaller cars. And by Mazda. Mazda, it just feels right. Welcome back to the arena in Orlando. When we resume, Shaquille O'Neal will head back to the line where he is 5 for 10, but uh, Shaquille has had his ups and downs in dramatic fashion at the uh, free throw line. These are some of his better days. Couple of 12 for 12, so 15 for 18. In contrast, he has also had disastrous times at the line. One of seven against the Knicks. Three of 13, a one of eight. Three of 12 on the 1st of March against Houston. On the subject of Shaquille's foul shooting, let's go over to Ahmad. Ahmad, Marv, I'm here with Buzz Brayman, who is the shooting coach for the Orlando Magic. And I guess you had your work cut out for you working with Shaquille. What kind of things have you done for him to help him in his foul shooting? Well, we're in a transition period, trying to take his old free throw and rework it to a more conventional shot, uh, more like, let's say, a Rick Smith. So we're in a transition period where there's like three or four technical things that have to get better for him to be more effective. Um, Right now, uh, he's definitely struggling. Although the last 75 free throws he took for the season were at about 72%, so it was getting better. He's got to be real careful on his second free throw uh, not to back away from the line as he shoots it. Sometimes he forgets that, and it really hurts him. All right, Buzz has had remarkable results as helping Gerald Whitman's of uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers. His three-point uh, percentage has gone up 10 points since working with Buzz Brayman. Mark? Strong endorsement from Ahmad as Richie Miller knocks Richie down the... The three and the Pacers now lead 65 to 62. You think Ahmad is a lobbying buzz to work on that outside jump shot? Most probably. And I guess it should be pointed out that both Buzz Brayman and Pat Williams get their shirts at the same store. Hardaway off the bar. And here's Workman giving it up to Miller. Oh, oh. Miller off the fake. Reggie Miller again. And Indiana's pulled away to a five point lead. Six minutes to go on the third. 
The Orlando Magic with big problems. Brian Hill staying with Shaquille O'Neal despite the fact he has four fouls. Rick Smith's a moment ago picked up his fourth. But uh, Larry Brown can afford to pull out Smith, so he's sitting down. Shaquille off the rebound is fouled. Well, Shaq continues to do the right thing when he gets the ball in the post and he's pushed too far outside of the lane of making that quick outlet pass. Now, Dennis Scott has gotten a couple of good looks. I'm sure Brian Hill would like to see Dennis get going because he's an important part of this offense for Orlando. If Dennis can make a couple, that'll draw the defense out. He's able to go by his man, and that'll get Shaq some uh, possible easier shot attempts. Antonio Davis called for the foul, putting... Shaquille back on the line. Here's Donald Royal. Dennis Scott sitting down 0 for 5 from the field and looks like he's mulling it over. Orlando only 1 for 7 in the third quarter. Well, Shaquille is picking it up at the line. Indiana now leads by 3. Shaquille has been to the line 10 times in this third quarter alone. Miller played by Anderson. Now that on the switch by Kristoviak, and the ball is deflected out by Kristoviak. Pacers will have 11 on the shot clock. Kind of a, a quiet series to this point for Reggie Miller, who is known as the master of trash talk. The only, only talk has been with some fans who have been on his case throughout, and Reggie Miller looking to Dick Pavetta for the indication and got it. It's a three-pointer. Well, Reggie's going to do his talking with his shooting, which is excellent, especially from beyond the arc. 24 points for Miller. And Indiana has taken a six-point lead. You just cannot lose contact with Reggie Miller on the baseline and then try to go over screens. He'll get wide open every time as Reggie Miller took a quick look at Dick Pavetta. <laughs> Ahmad Rashad back at the Arena here in Orlando, and a lot of notable celebrities here in the crowd. There's Bryant Gumbel, and also joining me now is Charlie Ward, the Heisman Trophy winner. And I guess the first thing I have to ask you is what were your feelings after not getting drafted in the NFL? Well, it wasn't in the hard feelings toward the NFL. It was just something they, a decision they made on not drafting me, and they had that reason for it. So I'm a better man from it. What about, was there any truth to the, to the matter that you said that you'd rather play basketball, that's why they were afraid to draft you? Well, no. Um, I just suggested that I would rather be a first-round pick, and no one stepped up to, to my question. But, you know, the NBA is there for me, and also the CFL, so I still have options. You know, there is always places in sports for a winner. Well, the Lord is going to bless me whichever direction I go, so... He's in, it's in his hands. Now, are you planning on playing basketball? Well, I'm working out now trying to better my skills so I have a better chance at playing. So, you know, hopefully I can make someone's club if, if drafted. All right, good luck to you, Charlie. Thank you. All right, back to you, Marv. Right, I'm on, and the word is that uh, Charlie Ward's stock as a point guard has been going in a very positive direction in uh, recent weeks. Remains to be seen as to whether he would be a first-round draft pick. Anthony Hardaway call for the foul is third and Reggie Miller with 10 of his 25 points in the third quarter. Indiana now leads 72 64. They have settled down and taken over. They led by as many as 10 in the first half. It has been an invisible performance here by Shaquille O'Neal. Indiana 7 of 11 from the field in the third quarter and Shaquille O'Neal in foul trouble with four, only one of six from the floor, eight of 14 from the line. Has not been able to get into it. Reggie Miller continues to destroy the Orlando Magic. And the Magic only have 18 field goals in this ballgame. They are staying somewhat in this game, however, trailing by 10 at the free throw line. Orlando one for nine from the field now in the third. Anderson. Nick Anderson going glass. Anderson has 14. We come up on four minutes to go in the third. And it's Indiana by eight. Indiana Pacers seeking to make it a 2-0 lead in this best of five. They'll play game number three at Market Square in Indianapolis on Monday night. The script. The end result, Anderson comes away with the ball. Hardaway wide open for three. Yes. Anthony Hardaway single-handedly keeping the Magic alive. And a timeout called by the Pacers. 
Walker. 25 points for Hardaway. 3.41 remaining in the third. It's the Pacers 74 and the Magic 69. A reminder tomorrow, beginning with NBA Showtime, a special triple header of NBA playoff action right here on NBC. It'll be Derek Coleman of the New Jersey Nets going up against Patrick Ewing and their cross-Hudson rival New York Knicks at Madison Square Garden. Very physical game last night, won by the Knicks at the Garden. And then Mark Price said his injury hit Cleveland Cavaliers taking on Scotty Pippen and the defending world champion Chicago Bulls. Bulls beating the Cavaliers last night in Chicago in game one. And the day will be capped off with Sir Charles. Charles Barkley leading his Phoenix Suns against Chris Webber, Latrell Sprewell on the Golden State Warriors. They had a terrific game last night. A lot of talking between uh, Barkley and Chris Webber and Latrell Sprewell. Exciting day of basketball beginning at 12 noon Eastern time with NBA Showtime. That's tomorrow. Well, a three-pointer by Anthony Hardaway has gotten this crowd here at the Orlando Arena back into the game. Brian Hill has had to make a couple of tough decisions in this third period. Shaquille O'Neal picked up his fourth foul with a little over nine minutes to go. He had Gamble left him in the ballgame. So far, so good for Orlando. And he also took Dennis Scott out, one of his key offensive players, as far as spreading the floor and decided to go with defense and Donald Royal. And Royal, who will take the ball to the basket and get fouled. And it has gotten the Magic back into this game. Reggie Miller has scored the Pacers last 11 points. He has 28 for the game. This an Indiana team that began the season one and six. They were 16 and 23. From late January on, they won 31 and lost 12. That's the second best record in the NBA, right behind the Seattle Supersonics. Going up against an Orlando Magic team that won 50 and lost 32, the best season in the history of the franchise. Workman for Antonio Davis. A rare outside shot by Davis. His second field goal is five, and the Pacers lead by seven. But did you see the defense by Anthony Hardaway? This guy has played every minute of the game and has been involved seemingly in every play, and he is really digging in defensively. Shaquille O'Neal with his best offensive move of the day. He has 12, and Indiana leads by five. And interesting, they got it by spreading the floor and running the high pick and roll, and let's get in a little movement go. Indiana's hit seven of its last eight shots. Just under three minutes to go on the third. Here's Workman rejected. Shot clock down to two. It's down to one. Workman gets it off. Rebound O'Neal. for Anthony Avent, who just checked back in, and he has stopped. Avent trying the post-up move. Here's Miller. Passed on the three. Derek McKee. Derek McKee line drives at home. That's only a second field goal. He has seven. Indiana, 78. Orlando, the same one. is a quiet offensive player, but he does so many other good things for the Pacers. He's a sound defensive player. He's an unselfish passer at the offensive end. Hardaway, Avent with the rebound. Shot clock at five. Shaquille O'Neal showing some signs. Indiana's lead is now five. And the Pacers take a timeout. Shaquille O'Neal getting the ball from Anthony Hardaway off the pick and roll, showing a nice little touch from about four feet away and doing the job at the defensive end as he knocked that shot out of there by Haywood Workman and then just getting prime position against Antonio Davis. No double team can get there in time. Shaquille O'Neal scoring 10 of his 14 points here in the third quarter. Three of eight from the field, eight of 14 
from the line. Shaquille O'Neal finishing second to David Robinson in the scoring race, averaging 29.3 per game, and picked it up following the All-Star break, averaging better than 30 a game after the midway point. Picked it up also in the rebounding department. Well, one of the things you got to be thinking about Shaquille in this particular ball game, the last couple of trips up and down the floor, he was directly involved in either scoring or knocking the shot out of there. But he looks a little bit fatigued right now. And when he is fatigued, that's when he may pick up a careless foul, a little push, a little reach in, or just anything to stop the clock. It might be a good idea right now for Brian Hill to get him out with just 1.49 to go in this period. Give him a rest here and then over the break between third and fourth quarter and then try to get him in back with about 10 or 11 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. He's telling those guys about the pressure. Let's go over to Ahmad Rashad. All right, Marv, during that timeout, Coach Hill was telling Anthony Hardaway and Bowie to keep the pressure on the ball, keep pushing up and keep all the pressure on the ball. does continue. Shaquille O'Neal does remain on the floor. A minute and 49 to go in the third. And Orlando trailing Indiana by five points. And Larry Brown wanted to stop the bleeding there, took that time out to make sure that in that half-court set, he's got another big guy coming down on Shaq, because Shaq has warmed up inside. Workman does not like the hand check from Hardaway. Illegal defense called for the first time today. Anthony, I should say Anthony Aven coming over to pick up the roller in that particular instance, and it was two Indiana Pacers guarding a man without the ball, the illegal defense. So the Pacers get a new 24 to work with. Dale Davis now being played by Shaquille O'Neal. Shot clock at 10. Workman. McKee for three. So the ball goes to Orlando. Derek McKee is not a player who usually looks for the three-point shot. Took only 31 during the regular season. We approach a minute to go in this third quarter. Dale Davis trying to front Shaquille O'Neal. On the double team, he draws the foul. And that became a triple team with McKee also joining in. The foul number nine. Antonio Davis doing a terrific job of keeping body contact on the front. Dale Davis coming over to help out, but Shaq with a power dribble got around Dale Davis on the baseline, and there came the third defender, Derek McKee, with the hard foul. Number four on McKee. O'Neal now 8 of 15. On the line is Kenny Williams for Derek McKee. Orlando is 23 for 35 at the foul line. Pacer 78 on the Magic 73. Here's Workman. And that is number five on Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> Anthony Bowie put his hand up. Donald Royal tried to get his hand up. Anybody but Shaquille O'Neal as Workman turns the corner on Hardaway. Got a little slap there. And Shaq got him twice on the arm and on the top of the head. And Shaquille will have to go to the bench now with number five. Well, this is where Brian Hill might second guess himself after the game for leaving Shaquille on the floor in the uh, final minutes of the third quarter. As I said, it would be a second guess. But Shaquille will sit down, and when he comes back sometime during the fourth quarter, he will try to stay alive despite the five personal. It's just one of those tough de decisions that usually you, you are guided by time and score, but with Shaquille struggling offensively, it looked like Brian wanted to let him in there to get something going, to get some confidence before he got him out. He just waited too long. Indiana 80, Orlando 73. 35 seconds remaining in the third. Avent in a battle with Antonio Davis takes it right to him. And it's handled by Workman. 
aggressive play of Haywood Workman paying dividends for the Pacers. Workman, 13 points, nine assists, having another solid game and working the clock down against Bowie. Down to five seconds. And Workman fires. That's the end of the third quarter. Reggie Miller exploding in the third quarter. 28 points in all for Miller. 13 of the 28 here in the third. We'll be back after a word from your local station. Copyrighted telecast of the National Basketball Association may not be retransmitted, reproduced, or rebroadcast without the express written consent of the NBA. Back in Orlando, Marv Albert with Matt Gukas and Ahmad Rashad. The Pacers leading the Magic by uh, seven, and they reflect back to game one Thursday night. The fourth quarter was not a good one for Orlando. 25% shooting on five of 20 from the field. You can see here today, Orlando with a poor shooting third quarter. It is Indiana ball as this fourth quarter gets underway. Vern Fleming and Byron Scott now in the backcourt. Sam Mitchell, Rick Smiths up front along with Dale Davis. And Rick Smiths has 10 points. The Pacers now lead by nine. Shaquille O'Neal sitting down after collecting his fifth foul. Anthony Hardaway posting up. Drawing a double team and is able to get the shot up. It nearly went in despite the fact but uh, an Indiana hand got a piece of it. Unbelievable how he got that shot off and almost went in as he was surrounded by three Indiana Pacers. It'll be Orlando Ball. Correction, it's Kenny Williams on the uh, front line with Rick Smith and Sam Mitchell. Hardaway tried to use the pick. third from downtown today he has 17 the Pacers now lead 82 76 Burns Fleming had a good stint in the first half Rick Smith rebounded by Donald Royal Anthony Hardaway is the high man with 25 leading Orlando here's Royal lost the grip but apparently it was deflected out by the Pacers. Byron Scott looking mystified by that call. He thought that it was not touched. But with 13 on the shot clock, Royal will throw in. A minute and a half gone by on the fourth. Nice pass, but Kostoviak will strip. Crowd wants a foul. Fleming. Setting up the play. And it's a block. Blocking foul charged to Royal. Well, nice feed to Larry Kristoviak on the underneath out of bounds play as Kenny Williams fell down, and that's how he got open. But Mitchell in there to strip him down low as the crowd reacted there as Larry Kostoviak felt he was hacked on the play. Not a lot of offensive players for Indiana on the floor right now with the exception of Rick Smith. And for the Orlando Magic, Nick Anderson really the only perimeter threat other than Hardaway who's dealing the ball. Eric McKee checking back in, replacing Kenny Williams. Tree Rollins getting involved with Rick Smith. And the foul is called on Tree, his second. Tree Rollins has plenty of fouls to waste here as he wants to be as physical as possible in pushing Rick Smith off the block as they battle there. Smith, of course, has to be careful. He has four fouls. Picked it up with just under seven minutes to go in the third quarter. They double up on Smith. Able to get it to McKee. And now McKee will go to the line. Foul committed by Kristoviak. I'm really surprised that the Magic came down and doubled Smith. They 
the Magic do have a lot of respect for Tree Rollins as far as being able to play individual man-to-man -man defense. They don't want to stretch their defense by having to come down and double team. You're not going to really bother Smith anyway. He's so tall, he's able to shoot that little turnaround jumper or the jump hook. You can't get to it anyway. McKee is a 75% free throw shooter. Indiana 83, Orlando 76, pressure being shown by the Pacers leading to that foul call. It's on Mitchell. They try to trap Hardaway. And a timeout is taken with just under 10 minutes remaining, fourth quarter. Miller Genuine Draft presents Genuine Moments. Today's fellow genuine draft, genuine moment, takes us back to 1973, the last time the Indiana Pacers won a championship. The Indiana Pacers of the ABA, led by George McGinnis, defeating the Kentucky Colonels. The Pacers also won ABA titles in 1970 and 1972. In recognition of this moment, Miller Genuine Grant will donate $1,000 to the Thurgood Marshall Scholarship Fund. Since coming on to the NBA ranks, the uh, playoff history, not impressive. In fact, for any this their fifth straight playoff appearance and still looking for their first series victory. But uh, a very fine start in this series against Orlando as they try to make it 2-0 in the best of five. Pacers by seven with 9.45 remaining in the fourth quarter. Hardaway attempting the stutter step. Anderson stopped by McKee, shot clock down to three. Anderson battling for that shot. He did against oh, very man. relentless defense from Derek McKee. Almost made the Magic use up the shot clock. Good poise by Nick Anderson to keep that dribble alive and get to a place where he could get up and score. The Indiana lead is now five. And the call away from the ball as Mitchell was sent flying. Rollins called for his third. Mitchell trying to set a screen in the lane to free up Smith coming up to the foul line area. Tree Rollins has never seen a pick he does not want to run through. Yes. <laughs> Burn Fleming played by Anthony Hardaway. Hardaway fell down. Fleming with the open shot. Hardaway lost his balance and went down. Oh, with this lineup on the floor for Indiana, they want to go inside to Rick Smith every time down the floor and see what develops. Fleming has come off the bench to hit three for three. The Pacers lead by seven. Royal backing Scott. Royal in a crowd. This was an off for Stoviak is fouled. He was hammered by McKee. And that is number five on Derek McKee. Is good. Larry Kristoviak has been in the right place many times this evening. Just been unable to get the shot up. He does not have a lot of lift in those legs. They've stripped him a couple of times, blocked his shot a couple, and that time McKee takes the hard foul to make Kristoviak try and earn it from the line. Larry Kristoviak on the line for the first time as you see Reggie Miller whip the warm-up jacket off. Ian Haywood Workman will check in. Larry Kristoviak has had playoff experience with the Milwaukee Bucks, one of the few on this Orlando roster to have previous experience come playoff time. Larry Brown with the substitutions. And here comes Shaquille O'Neal. Orlando along with Dennis Scott. The Magic need Dennis Scott to find the range. Shaquille O'Neal had an outstanding first game on Thursday. But it has been a struggle here today. Did show some signs in the third quarter and then picked up his fifth foul. And Dennis Scott showed some fr frustration and dismay when he was taken out of the ballgame in the third period. He does have his right hand wrapped and it looks like he's got some kind of a right thumb injury which would certainly affect his long range shooting. Dennis 0 for 5 from the field. Indiana with the ball and a five point lead. 8 35 remaining in the fourth. The alley-oop, Dale Davis from Hayward Workman. And Indiana leads by seven. All set up on the movement without the ball by Reggie Miller. The whole defense reacted to it, and Shaq stepped up. That led Davis a clear path to the basket. Davis with 10 points, five of six from the field. Hardaway looking for the screen. Shot clock at five. Hardaway. Rebound, O'Neal. 
control. Reggie Miller on the baseline. This time, Nick Anderson a little bit closer, has one hand on the hip. He does a good job of following him. And because Shaquille O'Neal steps up to show on the dangerous shooter, Reggie Miller, that enables Dale Davis to get that alley-oop lob from Haywood Workman. And Matt Shaquille just took a long walk to the center court area, tries to settle himself down as he heads to the line. Eight of 16 from the line. Orlando, 26 for 39. A lot of free throws for the Magic, but not able to take advantage. Indiana leads 87, 81, just under eight minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. This may well be the season on the line here for the Orlando Magic. They do not want to go back to Indiana down two games to nothing. Shot clock at four. Here is Workman. Blocked by Hardaway. Hardaway being chased by Dale Davis and fouled. Well, actually, Dale Davis, I don't think he thought he could overtake Hardaway, but he did and probably didn't need to commit that foul as he leveled him off. But a great job defensively, really, by Nick Anderson to keep Reggie Miller from getting open. It forced Workman to take a bad shot, and the block shot by Hardaway sent him running to the other end. Four team fouls apiece on the Magic and the Pacers. And now Dick Pavetta walking over to the scorer's table. And they have two shot foul. They changed the call to a two shot foul. And I guess they're interpreting that as a clear path to the basket. However, Hardaway was going down the right sideline. And it looked like Dale Davis got all the way, not only alongside, but around in front of Hardaway. Nevertheless, he's on the free throw line. Good hustle job by... All they're going to say, Hardaway was shooting the ball. Oh, what a terrible call. Well, Larry, Forget the clear path. Yeah. Larry Brown very upset as he saw Hardaway convert on both. And it brings Orlando with him for Miller. Unconscious Reggie Miller, 11 for 17, 30 points, and Indiana now leads 89 83. Five minutes gone by in the fourth. Dennis Scott way off the mark. Scott is 0 for 6. Here's Miller on the post. He claims he was fouled. Back comes Hardaway. Hardaway. Got out of the way. 29 for Hardaway. The Magic within four. Mitchell, no foul caught on the contact, and it's tipped home. Dale Davis also took a tip on the top of the head. A tip with the edge of Shaquille O'Neal's elbow, and that has to smart. But Davis with a sixth field goal. He has 12 points. Indiana 91, Orlando 85. A terrific finish here at the arena. In Orlando, six minutes to go, fourth quarter. Dennis Scott off the drive. Yes, that is his first field goal. So Scott, who has not been able to hit from the outside, finally hits with the drive to the basket. And it's Indiana by four. Whistle away from the ball. Foul called on the Magic. It's on for Stoviak. That is his third. Timeout taken with 5.58 remaining in this fourth quarter. Here is the play of the game. Hardaway off the crossover, able to put it down. The NBA on NBC is brought to you by Cold Filtered Miller Genuine Draft. Get out of the old, get into the cold. By Wendy's and the Bacon Mushroom Melt. you just got to have one. And by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Back in Orlando, I mentioned the sense of urgency for the Orlando Magic. Matt, you look back in best of five series in NBA playoff history, only four teams have ever come from behind after trailing 
two games to zip. The last team to do it, the Phoenix Suns, beat the uh, Los Angeles Lakers a year ago in their opening round series. But it is very difficult to accomplish. Game three will be played in Indianapolis on Monday night, game four, Thursday at Indiana. And the Orlando Magic do not want to go to Market Square trailing two zip. 5.58 remaining, fourth quarter. Pacers now lead by five, 92 to 87. The timeout rundown. Indiana has four and a 20. Orlando only down to one and a 20. Orlando to the line 42 times here this afternoon. But they have not been able to hit their free throws. Hardaway facing some pressure. Pacers now by six. They've led by as many as ten. They led in the early going. Then Orlando took the play away. They led by as many as six points. Indiana turning it up in the third quarter. Led by Reggie Miller. Shot clock at three. Hardaway has to force. It's a 24-second violation. Terrific. Excellent defense. Yes, my excellent defense by Reggie Miller on Dennis Scott. And Dennis has shown the ability when he's checked that tightly that he can drive by his man. For some reason, he's not doing it that much today. Antonio Davis gives it back to Reggie Miller. And Shaquille O'Neal comes away with it. for three. Yes! Dennis Scott looking to get off. That's his first from the outside, and it brings the Magic within three. Just under five minutes remaining in the fourth. Good job by Anderson on Workman. McKee handling against Scott. Shot clock at five. Crowd wants to travel. Miller gets it off. One count, 24 seconds, violation. The defense of the Orlando Magic just smothering that time, not letting the Indiana Pacers get into any kind of offense, and the crowd has really responded to it. I think it all started with a little over six minutes to go, the driving dunk by Anthony Hardaway, and now the three-pointer by Dennis Scott, and the crowd has something to believe in. Four and a half remaining in the fourth. Illegal defense called on the Pacers. Illegal defense. And that is their first the violation. So that's Illegal a warning. A new 24 Indiana. provided for ball. Orlando. The Pacers want to trap every pick and roll hard. They did that, and then they pre-wrote to Shaquille O'Neal. They just got caught in the wrong place at the wrong time. Just a, a warning on the illegal. Miller all over Scott now, respecting the outside touch. Hardaway for Anderson for three. And it's batted out of bounds, so Orlando will maintain possession. Dale Davis could not hold on. Penny Hardaway doing an outstanding job getting into the lane, drawing the defense, kicking to the wide open Anderson, and then battling three pacers for the rebound, forcing them to knock it out of bounds. Hardaway played by Workman. O'Neal out, trying to set the pick, then tried the pick and roll. Pass off the mark, handled by Miller. Here's Miller for Antonio Davis. What a move by Antonio Davis. And Dennis Scott, I think, tried to foul him there, and Antonio just overpowered Dennis Scott on the slam. Fast break. Indiana now by five. Hardaway facing a double team. Hardaway with the spin. Hardaway with the rebound. Hardaway on the follow. Oh, he has had a sensational game. 31 for the rookie from Memphis State, Anthony Hardaway. Pacers lead 95-92. 3.20 to go in the fourth, and Anderson is called for the foul. Anthony Hardaway isn't even breathing hard. He is just playing unbelievable basketball as he wheels and deals, gets into the lane, misses, gets his own rebound, and takes it up strong enough against some tough pressure inside by the Pacer big men. Workman to the line with the magic over the limit. He's an 80% free throw shooter. 
Haywood was but originally a second round draft pick of the Hawks back in 89. Played only six games with Atlanta, moved on to Washington, then Indiana. After playing in the Italian League for two years, barely made the team after a poor preseason, but came on during the regular campaign and won the starting point guard job. 97-92, Indiana. 3.15 remaining in the fourth. They double up on Hardaway. Ristovia. Shaquille O'Neal lost it. Good idea that time by the Pacers to go double-team Hardaway, get the ball out of his hands. They don't want to see him with the basketball any way, shape, or form. Miller had a knock away by Hardaway. Miller on the recovery. Finding Dale Davis. Dale Davis, 7 of 8, 14 points. And it's Indiana 99 and Orlando 92 with two and a half to go on the fourth. Open shot from Kristoviak. They gave him that shot. Handled by Wurtzman. Kristoviak slow in getting up. Apparently all right. Oh, Miller rejected by Hardaway. Here's Scott with the key back. Scott for three. Yes. So Dennis Scott, after having big problems with the shot early, has hit his second from downtown. It keeps the magic alive. They're down by four. Indiana calls for time with 2.08 remaining in the fourth quarter. Two minutes and eight seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. The Pacers leading the Magic by four points. For those of you who may have just tuned in, it has not been a good one for Shaquille O'Neal. Certainly one of his most ineffective performances of the season. While Anthony Hardaway, with 31 points, is only one shy of a career high. 12 of 24, 31 points in all for Hardaway. Indiana led by Reggie Miller. Miller has been on fire. He has 32 points. Another good one for Haywood Workman with 15, along with 10 assists and 10, uh, 14 points for Dale Davis. And the first part of our NBA playoff doubleheader seen here on NBC, it was Utah defeating San Antonio 96-84 at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio to even that series at one apiece. Workman able to work three from Anderson, and it's put home again. Dale Davis was right there. He's eight for nine. He has had a spectacular game. 16 points for Davis, along with nine rebounds. Hardaway. Hardaway able to keep it alive off the double team. Anderson for three. Well, the three-point shot. Saving the magic. It has allowed them to hang in. They are down by three. Indiana 101, Orlando 98, with a minute and 20 to go in this fourth quarter. Chance of defense. McKee goes back door, gives it up to Antonio Davis, and he hits. Antonio Davis with the spin. Nine points for Antonio Davis. And the Pacers now lead by five. Hardaway. Rebounded by McKee. Down to 50 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Indiana in no hurry. Like to kill some time. Miller checked the clock. Shot clock is down to seven. It's down to four. It's down to two. And it's a 24 second violation. Uh, Larry Brown is a little bit upset, but rather than take a bad shot in that situation that might start a fast break for Orlando, it might as well commit the turnover. And really not that bad a play for the Indiana Pacers. Orlando taking a timeout. They are down to one timeout remaining. Well, 
up for the Indiana Pacers and the Orlando Magic. It has come down to this, 33 and a half seconds to go in the fourth quarter. Timeouts remaining, Indiana in excellent shape. The Magic down to a 20-second timeout. Shaquille O'Neal, only three of eight from the field. 15 points, only six rebounds. Anthony Hardaway, on the other hand, with 31 points. And Orlando has done it from three-point land. They're 10 of 17 from downtown, but they're trailing by five. Dennis Scott getting it off in a hurry. Dennis Scott with his third straight three. It brings Orlando within two, and Larry Brown calls for time. This game is so similar to the one on Thursday night, where the Magic had about a six-point lead with a little over a minute to go, and the three-point shot by Reggie Miller to get it back to even, and then Byron Scott, this time, Dennis Scott broke open on the side out of bounds play, and that shot was challenged by Reggie Miller, and somehow or other, Dennis Scott got it off. And that, that is a new NBA playoff record, 11 three-pointers by Orlando. We'll be right back. Screen-to-screener -screen action for the Orlando Magic to get either Nick Anderson in the right corner or Dennis Scott coming off the Shaquille O'Neal screen up here. Let's look at the screen by O'Neal as Reggie Miller doing everything he can to catch up, and Dennis, under intense pressure, nails the three-pointer. During the regular season, 155 three-pointers made by Dennis Scott, his personal best and a franchise record for the Magic. And Orlando now 11 of 18 from three-point territory, 11 three-pointers representing the most in NBA playoff history. Two-point lead now for the Pacers, 31 seconds. Remaining at a 20-second timeout taken, Derek McKee could not find anyone. So Indiana down to two timeouts remaining. Orlando has a 20 remaining. A reminder tonight, here on NBC, the first motion picture based on the true story of Nancy Kerrigan and Tanya Harding. We all know how it ends. You'll see how it began, the year's most compelling world premiere movie event. Tanya and Nancy, the inside story tonight at 8, 7 central here on NBC. 31 and 3 tenths seconds to go in the fourth quarter. So Indiana will try to inbound once again. That Dennis Scott quick release, quick look, and then able to hit the three just turns it all around here in the final half minute. And let's take a little bit of the strategy here. Actually, Derek McKee had Smith wide open, but with the security of the timeout, bailed out and took the 20. I think the Magic might think about fouling either Antonio or Dale Davis. Even though they need a stop, they have no timeouts left. Only a 20 second. Delay of game warning against the Magic. Now, delay, delay of game, game warning the taken the by Brian Hill to check the Indiana alignment. Dennis Scott stepping away on the inbounds by Derek McKee. Hayward Workman, guarded by Nick Anderson. Two-point lead for Indiana. Workman checking the clock. Shot clock is down to 10. It's down to six. Down to three. Workman has to force and it's blocked, taken by O'Neal. And Dick Pavetta indicating a, is indicating a 24 second violation. The basket won't count. It's a 24 second violation, which means the ball will go to Orlando. Uh, really a break for the Pacers there as Workman moved down to the baseline, forced to take that bad shot. And had it not been a violation, Penny Hardaway would have had that breakaway to tie this ball game up. 7.3 left in the fourth period. Very, very close. It looks like it was still showing one second as that ball was in the hands of Shaquille O'Neal. And really a bad break for the Orlando Magic as they got that break and breakaway taken away. Now the Magic using his final timeout. Seven and three tenths seconds remaining in regulation. Indiana 103, 
Orlando 101. So similar to the story in game one on, on Thursday, this one also goes down to the final seconds in game one with Byron Scott drilling the three-pointer to win it for Indiana. The Quartet City, or I should say Workman, Haywood Workman going to the baseline. Keep an eye on the shot clock up here as he releases this shot. Shaquille O'Neal with still one second to go. The Magic should have had a breakaway. On the 22nd timeout, they cannot advance the ball. Therefore, Orlando gets it in the backcourt. The Magic will not be pleased when they see that replay on the 24-second violation call. Hardaway, down to three. Hardaway looking for the shot, gets it off the top. have defeated the Orlando Magic 103 to 101. And they take a 2-0 lead in this best of five series. A season low of 15 points for Shaquille O'Neal. Reggie Miller led the way with 32. And this series shifts back to Market Square for game three on Monday night. Let's go over to Amal. All right, thanks, Bob. What an ending, Reggie. Thursday night, you guys won a very business, like almost lost it today the way you won it the other night. Well, we knew they were going to come out very focused, and we knew they had changed up their game plan. What we wanted to do was try to keep it close and see what they were going to do in the end. And uh, they fought hard and battled back, but I think our intensity and our desire was a little bit more. Well, you had all these fans, and you got them all riled up. you got to love it. I guess you'll be happy to get home and have a friendly crowd. they got a great crowd here, but when they come Monday night, I'm going to show them what some real fans are in Indiana. All right, congratulations, Reggie. All right. See you next week. All right. Back to you, Marv. Thank you, Ahmad. So Reggie Miller, 11 for 21, 32 points. Here's the uh, a look at the final seconds. Anthony Hardaway had difficulty setting up, finding a shot. Excellent team defense by the Pacers. Forced Hardaway to take the off-balance shot off the wrong foot. He had almost a perfect afternoon. He did just about all he could do to help the Magic. Just not, could not pull off the, uh, the, the tying basket right there. So Larry Brown and his Indiana Pacers are headed back Headed back home with a 2-0 lead in this best of five series. Anthony Hardaway with 31 points. Reggie Miller with 32. Again, the final. The Pacers over the Magic 103-101. For Matt Dukas and Ahmad Rashad, I'm Marv Albert. So long from Orlando. This has been the NBA on NBC.